Unless you've been living under the proverbial gaming rock for most of the last year, you have probably heard about AMD's X3D technology, the way they take some of their desktop CPUs and enhance them for gaming. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a deep dive on that technology today so we can better understand it, and just a little bit of foreshadowing about why I think the 7800X3D may end up being the biggest bang for the dollar gaming CPU on the market. Just to get everybody kind of on the same page here, this is what the Ryzen CPUs look like under the integrated heat spreader. You have chiplet zero and chiplet one, and they are where all the cores reside on these CPUs. The other chiplet you have here is the IO. An IO chiplet is just what it sounds like. It's gonna control the communication between the CPU and the rest of your computer, handling the PCI in and out, the USB in and out, and most importantly, maybe it's going to have your RAM controllers on board there. So although the IO is very important, it's not the subject of what we're looking at today. An interesting thing to keep in mind here, no matter which of the 7,000 Ryzen CPUs you may end up buying, they're all going to look the same under the hood. I mean, they're all going to have two chiplets and an IO die, whether you buy a 7600 or whether you buy a 7950X. Not to get too off in the weeds here, but if you bought a 7950X and you had die zero and die one, all 16 of these cores would be active in the CPU that you bought. Now, keep in mind, if you bought a 7900, you would have minus one core on the second die and minus one core on the first die. Then if you bought a 7800, one of the dies would be completely inactive. And if you bought a 7600, one of the dies would be completely inactive and two of the cores would be completely inactive. That's the way they have these different CPUs when they come to market. Like I said, they're all gonna have two dies and one IO die. Now the star of the show when you talk about X3D technology is really the cache. But what is cache? Well, cache comes in three flavors. Level one, which is very close to the core. You've measured this in very small amounts, like one megabyte, but it's very fast. And then you have L2 cache, which is a little bit further away from the core and not quite as fast. Obviously can hold a little bit more information. But then what we're really talking about here is our L3 cache. Now it's a little bit further, again, once away from the core, still obviously inside the CPU, but this is what is going to feed the information onto L1 and L2 cache. This is one of the best direct explanations I've seen of what cache is inside of a CPU. When the CPU needs data, it first searches the associated core's L1 cache. If it's not found, the L2 and L3 caches are searched next. If the necessary data is found, it's called a cache hit, meaning they found what they were looking for right there. On the other hand, if the data isn't present in the cache, the CPU has to request it to be loaded onto the cache from the main memory or storage. Traditionally, one of the things we've talked about as nerdy gamers is how fast is your RAM? Because the faster your RAM is, the faster it can get information over to the CPU. And that's still something that's pretty common. You can't store that much information on L3 cache but you can store some, but what's not there, it needs to be in your memory on your RAM, and that way it can feed that information directly to the CPU. Remember, RAM is not as fast as L3 cache, and you have a physically further distance across your motherboard to get the information there. Obviously, the CPU was looking for something that wasn't in the cache, and it wasn't on the RAM. Well, the next place for it to look for is the storage in your drive. Now, these days, you don't have that many times when you actually have to go all the way back to the drive to pick up information. Thank goodness, because that was a really slow process, speaking in terms of a computer. However, when you use this most is when you click on your favorite title to launch it and the CPU says, hey, the information is not here. Then they say, hey, it's not in the RAM either. Well, then it goes to the drive that it's being pointed to and tries to find the game that you want to launch it. Now, where is your money going for the 7950X3D at $700? Well, it's going for this L3 cache at a total of 128 megabytes. Now, the L1 and the L2 cache don't change this time around, but you are getting a lot more L3. Remember, the L3 feeds the L1 and L2. You can keep just that much more of your game file right there actually on the CPU in your L3 cache. And that's really one of the things here that makes these CPUs so interesting to gamers. Now keep in mind, this is actually happening inside the chiplet. You have it all the way down at the die level. But when you talk about the X3D, that extra L3 cache, they are literally binding it right there to the die itself. That's why it's such neat technology and one of the things that has never been done before. But it's how you get that extra L3 cache all the way down at the die level so close to the individual cores. Now, one of the questions I've seen out there in the wild quite a bit, well, hey, that's great gift. Does that mean if I get a 7950X3D, I'm gonna have that extra 64 megabytes 
on both of my chiplets? Well, the reality, unfortunately, is no. And here you can see a great graphic from over at Andre Schilling on Twitter. Uh, all credit due to him. If you are looking at a 7950X 3D, you are only going to have that extra 64 meg on one of the actual CCDs, one of the chiplets. And in fact, it looks like from some of the testing done at the guys over at Hardware Unboxed, once a game starts, you're really only pulling from one chiplet to run that game. So you're going to have all that cache and all the game performance coming off of one side of the, of the CPU. Again here, if you're looking at a 7900X 3D, really all that cache is on one chiplet again. And unfortunately, now you only have six cores. Now, to me, if you're buying this, a new CPU, an X3D CPU for gaming, the 7900X is really the odd one out at this point. Because if you look over here at the 7800X3D, the one they're holding off on, the one I'll talk about in just a minute, what you're having here is you only have one chiplet that runs, eight cores, all that extra cash though is on that one chiplet. So if you're using this for gaming, it's gonna have the equivalent of the 7950X3D at a lot less money. Now you're not gonna have the other chiplet activated on that CPU, you're not gonna be able to turn it on. It's always gonna be an eight core 16 thread CPU. However, if you're primarily gonna use this CPU for gaming, talk about great bang for the buck in comparison to the other offerings that they have right now. In fact, I don't know why any really serious gamer would even consider the 7900X 3D because you're only gonna have six cores and there's not gonna be any way around that uh, when you talk about using it for gaming. So where is this 7800X 3D? Why can't we buy one now? Well, AMD has elected to go ahead and hold off on the sale of that CPU until April 6th of this year. So you can buy the 7950X3D or the 7900X3D and pay a lot more money, quite frankly, especially if it's a gaming focused machine. Now, if you're going to be kind of in that hybrid state where you're really serious about your gaming, but you know, you got a day job like a lot of us do, and you're going to be doing some other stuff that requires more than say eight cores on your CPU, that's when you may think, hey, the 7900X3D is where I want to be, or maybe the 7950X3D. And you may frankly have a little bit higher turbo speed on those. It's going to be really interesting when the 7800X3D does make its appearance, is that is it going to be able to be overclocked in the end or use PBO and have a clock speed approaching what the other ones, because we've already seen some people do some pretty interesting overclocks. So why are they waiting? Well, I think two reasons. First of all, AMD, remember, is not your friend. No matter how many times Dr. Sue gets up there on stage and, you know, kind of does a little song and dance for us, they want to sell you the more expensive ones first if they can. They realize gamers are often enthusiasts and sometimes they will spend more money to be best or first or both when it comes to their hardware. The other reality is kind of what we talked about, and I'm not sure how much this would play. It just depends on what their production scale is looking like right now is remember all the CPUs are going to have two chiplets on board, but if you get a 7800X3D, one of the chiplets is going to be non-operational and the other one will have all eight cores working. So maybe it's one of those things they wanted to go ahead and produce a bunch of these things and find the ones that weren't working as they were going along producing 7900X3Ds and 7950X3Ds and that way they can set the 7800s to the side. It will take a little bit of production time to have a big enough pool of those CPUs available to go to the retail market. I frankly think it's just the first part and they want to sell them for more money. As always, guys, a massive thanks for watching the video. And until next time, GIF out.